Now I wish to turn uh, briefly to the whole question of whistleblowing. One of the most depressing and saddening parts of our inquiry was the way the Metropolitan Police treated James Patrick, my constituent. I've not been able to uh, address this uh, as fully as I'm going to now um, because his, uh, he was, there was an employment tribunal pending. Uh, he withdrew from the process. He couldn't take any more. It had taken too heavy a toll on him and his family. He was forced to resign from the Metropolitan Police acting as a whistleblower, he tried to highlight serious concerns about police recorded crime and the target culture. We are indebted to PC Patrick for his courage in speaking out, in fulfilment of his duty to the highest standards of public service, despite intense pressures to the contrary. Paul Ford of the Police Federation told us that his organisation was, and I quote, dealing with a lot of stifled whistleblowers, unquote, and added, we have lots of anecdotal information, but, unfortunately, People are fearful of coming forward and raising concerns. That comes down to the whistleblowing aspect of the lack of protection for people, the peer pressure and the fear factor in terms of their future. I am pleased that the Minister for Crime Prevention told me that the Home Office are looking at the range of radical proposals to strengthen protection for whistleblowers in the police. But this has all come too late for my constituent, though I look forward to what he might be going to add today. Our inquiry and the evidence presented to pass and the reaction of the UK Stats Authority, withdrawing their approval of police recorded crime stats, vindicates Mr Patrick and his actions utterly and completely. Even the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police agreed, as I quoted earlier, there is clearly something that PC Patrick raises that we need to get to the bottom of, unquote. Despite this, I can only describe the treatment of my constituent PC Patrick as shameful, by, his duty and raising this, by doing his duty and raising these issues, he showed the highest commitment to those core policing values. But as a result, he became the victim of the most monstrous injustice. He was effectively hounded out of his job, following a long period of harassment by the Metropolitan Police command chain, who used and abused, I dare say, the disciplinary process to get rid of him. It does the police no credit that a whistleblower should be treated in this way. He was accused of a conflict of interest, for example, for publishing a book about the misuse of police-recorded crime statistics, even though the proceeds were paid to a charity, a police charity. Commissioner Bernard, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe said that he would meet PC Patrick on a LBC radio programme in December last year. I have to tell the, the House that he never actually did so. Most shameful of all, the Police Federation, which has seen fit to finance a libel action um, which has, at, at the choice of a serving police officer against a former cabinet minister, my right honourable friend for Sutton Coldfield, to the tune of hundreds of thousands of pounds, I could not persuade the Police Federation to fund the legal expenses and representation of PC Patrick in the employment tribunal which he was due to appear in front of as part of his defence. And I find that completely and utterly inexplicable, particularly after the Police Federation told us themselves, in evidence to our committee, how difficult it is for police whistleblowers in this country. I give way to my, uh, the Honourable Gentleman. Thank the Honourable Member for, for, for giving way uh, during his excellent speech and agree with everything he said about this so far. Doesn't what he's saying about the police... Uh, the, about the, um, that we need a proper trade union for police officers who would defend individuals in the way he suggests and not an organisation which is effectively half controlled by the Home Office rather than by the members who it's supposed to serve. Well, I, I do hear what the Honourable Gentleman says, who's also a member of the committee and took part in this inquiry. Um, but uh, after what the Home Secretary said about the Police Federation, I don't think the Police Federation should be regarded as a part of the Home Office. Um, they, they, um, <laughs> um, um, I, I'm afraid, I think the Police Federation are, are, are a branch of the, some of the worst aspects of police culture, um, that um, uh, they need a dose of ethics and integrity as much as uh, some parts of the police. Um, and uh, um, I'm not going to make a speech today about the Police Federation, but I think it is, uh, this incident is yet another one which utterly vindicates uh, the, the, what the, my writing friend, the Home Secretary, told the Police Federation, I think, about a, 
uh, six months ago in a very courageous and outspoken speech.